Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharti and today we have with us once again Clyde C. Prasad, SVP and General Manager of Training and Certification at the Linux Foundation. And today we are going to talk about the 10th Annual Open Source Jobs Report. Clyde, first of all, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Swapnil. appreciate the opportunity to be with you. This week is Open Source uh, Summit. Uh, and of course, this topic will keep coming up. So first, let's talk about, you know, what are your expectations from uh, the event? Getting people back together. <laughs> it's been two plus years before we since we've had the opportunity to gather together both in person and virtually. So really looking forward, there will be well over a, a thousand people on site and starting to work our way back towards a, a new normal where we're able to meet and exchange ideas in person. Based on this uh, report, what are the biggest challenges, you know, either for, you know, employers who are looking to either recruit or retain open source talent or from the folks who wants to find jobs? So is there still the huge supply and demand gap? Yeah, I think we are continuing to see that. The, uh, the adoption of cloud obviously accelerated during the pandemic. And what we're seeing now is once you once you get into this mode of not hosting your own infrastructure, uh, there's no going back. And so while a lot of new apps got uh, created natively on the cloud, there is a massive amount of legacy infrastructure sitting there that you, know, you can't, I, I tell people that you know, there is no magic pixie dust to containerize your old infrastructure. You have to go in app by app, line by line, refactor the code. And so the amount of engineering that's going to have to be implemented to move those is significant. And at the same time, more and more uh, companies are moving to the cloud, you know, even really small companies. And so you have this you know, demand that has spread out. And geographically, because more companies are more willing to hire other than at their office uh, sites, what used to be some pools of talent that weren't directly in the big sort of tech areas, those are now getting tapped more and more as well, right? And so you have folks in, you know, in the U.S. in Indianapolis, right, getting uh, uh, recruited much more heavily because increasingly you can work from anywhere. And while that plays to the strength of some of the larger employers who are able to systematically recruit the talent regardless of location, that does put pressure lower down the stack, right, on those uh, quote unquote local or regional businesses that were previously. Uh, well set in terms of the regional workforce. Excellent. Now, since we're talking about pandemic, yes, it did accelerate uh, folks, you know, digital transformation journey or move towards the cloud. Um, but it kind of also created another set of challenge that we are seeing now is great resignation. What kind of impact do you see there on the industry? You know, I think from a technology industry perspective, we haven't really seen a great resignation per se. But there has been a fair amount of turnover in the jobs report, this 10th version. About a third of folks have changed jobs in the past year, uh, which is a little bit, I think, higher than normal. The counterpart to that is we're seeing a lot more activity by employers to hold on to the folks that they have. And uh, so because employers have been more proactive, I think they've prevented some as uh, some of the turnover that might otherwise have happened. As you said, you know that employers are trying their best to retain developers uh, or you know engineers. Uh, first of all, if you can share with us, you know what have you seen? What are they doing uh, to not only retain the existing employees but also attract new ones? Of course, uh, one one carrot is that hey, remote work you can work from wherever you can. But what are the other things that you're seeing that they are doing? Or from your perspective, what because you have been doing this report for so, so long and you work closely with the industry, you do have a lot of insights what they can do to retain. So I'm asking both sides what they are doing that you're seeing and what they can do. The, the two biggest levers that we've seen being utilized are remote work. So people having being able to work from different locations. And if you think of some of the high cost locations, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area, the area around Bangalore, uh, it's certainly attractive to allow people to work from other locations just in terms of the cost of living and that sort of you know impact on your real earnings. But the second has been pay, 
there's been a fair amount of pay increases flushing through the system. And uh, you know, historically in the report, pay was a factor, and it might be at number you know, three, number four. Uh, it is clearly now the number one thing uh, from an employee perspective, uh, in part because they have so many opportunities popping up in their inboxes, right? More and more recruitment pressure. And uh, they, and so companies are being forced to, uh, you know, play offense and defense at the same time, right? Paying more to attract new talent, but also having to pay more to uh, retain the talent that you have. And I think that probably feels uh, at least a little unfamiliar uh, to, to many companies where, uh, Historically, there's been more focus on what the pay should be for new employees come in, coming in the door and maybe not as much focus on what's the pay for retention. I think pay for retention has clearly moved up the stack in terms of something that, that really needs to be top of mind. This question can be interesting because we're talking about hey, what they can do or what they're doing to retain. What are the things they should avoid where you see it triggers you know, employees that they, they look at moving out? So have you also seen, hey, these are the things you should not do? Yeah, you know, there's a few things, right? One, of course, is company reputation. I, I think in general, over the past several years, uh, you've seen a lot more, especially in the younger generation, a lot more awareness of uh, the employer and the employer reputation. So that certainly is something that is taken on an enhanced importance. Um, but also the other one I would say is uh, the idea that the burden is on the employee to figure out their path. Uh, you know, I think the a, a, a company that 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 pushes off the responsibility and is expecting every employee to figure out for themselves what's the next technical skill they need, what's the right portfolio of skills they need to move up to the next level, that's gonna turn folks off. And we have seen that reflected in, for instance, the share of companies actively investing in training their workforce and certifying their workforce. I remember when we started doing this report, company hiring managers would just flat out tell you we don't really invest in training because that's just going to encourage folks to go out there and find another job, and uh, and so we're going to invest these dollars and get and somebody else is going to benefit. I think that mindset has really changed to one of saying, well, if you don't if you don't train and encourage and develop growth, employees are going to go find that somewhere else because yes, pay has become more important, but. How do you invest in the relationship? How do you create loyalty with that workforce? And that requires an all of the above strategy, right? So just pay alone is not gonna cut it. There's this whole basket of factors, including how are you investing in me and my career, including what's the company reputation, including pay, including things like flex time, right? And so uh, really being able, you know, if you do not take a holistic approach to the employee engagement, you're gonna find yourself on the wrong you know the wrong end of the equation yeah and as you were saying earlier you know uh, the image i think uh, earlier it was seen as you know two separate things but in, especially in the tech or other space also uh, culturally folks are becoming more and more aware so still uh, actually linux foundation you, you folks have been doing like when we go to uh, even open source summit you know uh, you folks take care of you know in, in the moms and the dads you know it's a event where you know the whole family can come so you are aware of you know inclusion diversity so that's also becoming effective where folks are like not comfortable working with companies who do not kind of share the views that they have in terms of inclusion, diversity, and being a welcoming environment as well. So that's what also we are seeing, seeing some movement there. Yeah, that, and that falls into the whole reputational piece, right? You know, being committed to a diverse workforce uh, is something, again, as part, particularly for that millennial generation, it's something they're very keenly aware of. What kind of skills you are seeing are most in demand? It's the things you would expect, right? And so anything related to um, cloud native is obviously hot. Everything related to cybersecurity is very much top of mind. And as a general context, DevOps and GitOps, this idea that there's what used to be these clear walls between the developer crew and the implementation crew just continues to, to crumble under the weight of the new expectations. This it has kind of Linux Foundation late path for this uh, next question, but it is 
if somebody wants to pursue a career through open source, uh, what is the right way? Uh, because there, first of all, there are a lot of projects. You can get started on your own, but you do need a very concrete plan, a strategy, uh, or some help also. So talk about uh, you know some some points there to help folks. Everybody should get into into the Git environment and become familiar with this idea of how modern code gets managed and how you can. You don't have to start by doing. You can start by simply observing a GitHub repo, seeing what pull requests look like, seeing what the velocity looks like, looking at what some of the comments are, and then pick something, right? It, it, it does not matter if it's small. Pick like your pet peeve of the thing that you don't like in the interface and get in there and see if you can make a contribution towards making it better. Uh, the goal is not necessarily to say that you've made a thousand accepted pulls. It's it's to get used to this workflow and to get yourself into the dynamic of, of working collaboratively together on code. And everybody is a developer now, right? And so you know, it used to be that folks who were more on the engineering deployment security side would hesitate to go look more closely at the code because the idea was that that was the realm of the developers. And the same was true with developers, right, in terms of things like scalability. And as that wall has really broken down and this idea of DevOps and GitOps and everybody's responsible for the code collectively, it's really opened the door towards folks getting exposed to what the code is and how it gets managed. And then opportunities to, con to contribute, right? It, it can be a really small one-line edit. Uh, but if you can get yourself into that workflow and into that world of how uh, code gets uh, collaboratively developed and implemented, that's going to light the spark for your career. This is the 10th annual report. You have been doing it for a while. If I ask you, if you look back at, you know, the, you know, the years of this report, what kind of evolution you have seen of the job market in general? I would say really three things, right? One is the talent pool has become really global. And that's a function of, of organizations spreading out and having more locations. And that's now particularly a function of more remote work being possible for a lot more employers. And so that's that's probably the biggest change is you don't have to go to the job anymore. In some real sense, the job uh, comes to you. Uh, the GitOps DevOps re re revolution is the second one, right? This, uh, it, with the, the the barriers between the different groups within organizations, right? You remember the old way, right? There was the developers here, there was the QA folks in the middle, and then there was the, the folks who deployed and scale. Uh, I would challenge anybody to find a a uh, an open job rec for a QA engineer, right? I think it just it, it's gone away. It's gone away because these things have collapsed much more closely together. And so now you will see things like site reliability, which is a function of, you know, what's the code coming in, how stable it is, as well as, you know, how are the clusters set up and can we scale it? So I think that change has been really big, right? This idea that this, the skills are now much more of a continuum where there used to be very discrete, um, very discrete buckets. Uh, and I think the, the third big one is we've really in the age of of uh, cloud computing gotten to a lot more commonality in the stack, right? You look across every major cloud provider and they're running Linux as the OS, Kubernetes as the orchestrator. I think that's great news for your career if you're starting out in IT because you used to have to pick a lane, right? Hey, I'm gonna be a, you know, a .NET guy, or I'm gonna be an Oracle gal. Uh, now, because you have this really broad common denominator in how the infrastructure is stood up, I think that really allows uh, for this next generation of talent to come in, to get comfortable with the core architecture, and then have a lot more opportunities available to them in terms of how and where they take their career. It's really been striking uh, how much more evenly balanced the, the tensions are between the technical workforce and the employers. I mean, and this is true throughout the economy, right? You're seeing this in the service sector, uh, but it's come to tech. I think people maybe thought, oh, well, it's service jobs and, you know, they're, they're, they're standing on their feet dealing with people not wearing a mask. But 
it's come to tech too, right? The, the, the pay is going up, the, uh, the pushback on quality of life. Clyde, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only this report, but also kind of reflect on how have you, how you have seen the evolution, what, what industry and, you know, of course, Organization Linux Foundation doing to help folks retain talent and get new jobs. You're, you're actually handling both sides of the problem, employees and employer side, which is excellent. So, yeah, so thanks for uh, sharing the, all those insights and I'd love to have you back on the show soon. Thank you. As always, Swapner, thanks so much for the opportunity to be here and share some thoughts with your viewers.